Hello, my name is Nazir Khan from the Faculty of Civil Engineering Technology, and I will be presenting to you the recognition of Zero Force member. Zero Force members are structural members that do not carry any load until forces are applied. When structural calculations are necessary, it is useful to visually recognize Zero Force members. This minimizes the amount of calculations to be done. The presentation is to visually recognize Zero Force member or how to visually recognize Zero Force members. And we will be looking at two scenario will be examined. When three forces act through a joint and two of the forces have the same line of action, the third force will be a Zero Force member. When we look at that from a pictorial point of view, we have force 1, force 2, and force 3. We have force 1 and 2 in the same line of action. Really, when we look at the components of force 1 and 2, they must be the same magnitude. The horizontal component will be the same magnitude. The only difference is that they were gonna have they're going to have opposite direction. This one is going to the right, and this one is going to go to the left which means that if we were to algebraically add them it would equal out to zero and likewise with the vertical component of force one and the vertical component of force two if we were to add these up they would equal to zero because they have the same magnitude the same number now if we introduce a third force in there that third force will pull this line of action out of a straight line it would just pull it out. Let's uh, take a look at where these type of uh, joints happen in say a structure or a truss system. We could see that the red marquee here shows you two possibilities of where zero force members happen. We have three forces at a joint. Two of them are in the same line of action. That means this one is a zero force member. There's another scenario, this, the second case that we're going to speak about in a, in a couple of slides from now. But this is called a bird beak. And these are zero force members too, but we'll discuss that when we get there. Let's go and uh, take a look at uh, a visual demonstration of a zero force member. Uh, how zero force member actually works. This demonstration shows you how to recognize a zero force member on a joint. When a joint has three forces, the three forces um, are all in tension here. The washer represent the joint. If I were to release one of the forces, one the tension forces, you could see that we have a line of action that is really a line. If we were to basically attach the other force, put some tension into it, you could see that line of action is no longer exists between the two forces. I could do that to any one of these joints, release one of the force, and you would have um, a straight line when there's only two force that has magnitude. As soon as there's a third force with magnitude, that line of action no longer exists between the two forces. Okay, let's, uh, let's go back to our presentation and uh, consider the second scenario, this case two. When two structural members meet at a joint and one of the member is an angular member, then both members are zero force members. I'm speaking about this particular joint here. Okay, let's, uh, let's do an explosion of that particular joint. We're looking at joint A and this is joint A. If we were to do an FBD of joint A, this is the way that it would look. We would have a horizontal member and this angular member here has a horizontal component. Those two will cancel out each other. Nothing is there to cancel out the vertical member though. So this particular joint cannot be in equilibrium. Okay, All of the forces have to uh, cancel out each other for the joint to be in equilibrium. And of course we have the horizontal cancelling out but the vertical does not. What situation would enable us to have a structural member not moving right in equilibrium and yet for instance uh, 
you know, there's unequal. Well, the only scenario that happens like that is if these two members carry no load. They are zero force members. Okay? Now, we do see structures like this um, in buildings, especially when you're looking at uh, a support for signage. And I'll bring that into play right now. We have a sign that's hanging from this point right here. And that sign now is the force. So when we look at this, all of the members are carrying load now. We have this horizontal will cancel with this one, and this vertical will cancel with that one. So it still is in equilibrium, but this is not a zero force member case. A zero force member case is exactly what's shown here. We have two forces coming together. One is an angular force, and of course, for it to be in equilibrium, these have to be zero force members. This scenario is usually called a bird beak. And uh, those are the two scenarios that we should recognize in structural, especially when we're working with trusses and recognizing zero force member, because it allows us to basically not do the calculation for these members. And as we get into truss systems, uh, the calculations are fairly extensive because you go from joint to joint we would have to do several calculations here we would have to do several calculations here we have one joint we would have one two three about four calculations in there about four in there and it just keeps on going so if you could minimize the amount of uh, uh, members by just visually recognizing the zero force member you're minimizing the amount of calculations to be done okay I hope that that uh, helps you with your study thank you bye bye